Bitcoin's future unveiled, Fred's predictions, and the path to six-figure BTC. I definitely think Bitcoin is going to be a much better asset to hold than large-cap U.S. stocks over the next 10 years. I think, you know, most of these ETFs, even though ETFs do trade and, you know, actually they're trading quite a bit, right? The volume of these ETFs is remarkable, right? It's remarkable. It's like 10% of Bitcoin's entire volume right now is on these ETFs, right? So Bitcoin's trading, you know, $20 billion a day, you know, and, oh, sorry, it's $20 and $2 billion a day is trading on these ETFs. So it's already approaching 10% of the exchange volume of, of Bitcoin, which just tells you something. If you've been in the space for any amount of time, You'll know Fred is an OG who's seen it all. And he's sharing some game-changing thoughts on where he believes BTC is headed next. From the potential of a Bitcoin ETF to send prices skyrocketing, to why he thinks holding long-term is the only way to play. But are his outlooks too bullish? And does mainstream adoption through WallSaint actually pave the way for six-figure Bitcoin as he suggests? We're gonna dive deep into analyzing Fred's top five predictions today breaking down both where he's spot on as well as any risks worth mentioning. By the end, you'll have a clear view of whether Fred could be onto something huge here or if he's getting ahead of himself. And if that's not enough crypto firepower for you today, we'll also look at a few other price factors at play that could help make or break Fred's outlook. So smash that subscribe button and get ready for what I think will be one of our most exciting episodes yet. Let's get into it. I feel like Bitcoin, it's really a discovery in that sense. It really, it's sort of the canonical form of what, you know, this thing must look like. And, you know, Adam Back said this video, which resonated with me a lot. He said, you know, he goes, I'm pretty technical. And when I saw Bitcoin, I sort of spent two months trying to fix it and make it improve it and make a better version. And he goes, and then I realized you actually couldn't make a better version, you know? And so it's really is, that's the discovery. You know, you, know, you could change a few things here or there. You could say it's not 21. 1 million coins you could change. You could change the happening to every year or every six months. It doesn't matter, right? There's lots of different ways you can do it. But the fundamental form of what that is, is like, it, that's that's the way you solve money. And that was solved in 2008. And we're just coming to grips with what that means as, as a species, you know, that we figured out a, a way to have this, this money that does not depend on any committee. It doesn't depend on any trusted third party. You know, it doesn't depend on Satoshi or anybody else. Well, he was so right. Last year, the SEC finally gave the green light. And since that historic moment, Bitcoin has absolutely exploded. As I record this, the price is sitting just above $1.62K, way above Fred's most conservatively bullish calls. But it's not just the price action. No, Fred's insight that a Bitcoin ETF would truly flood the market with institutional adoption has come true in spades we're finally at the point where even your average 401k has exposure to Bitcoin. It's truly become mainstream. So with the benefit of hindsight, it's clear Fred really knew what he was talking about when he pinned his outlook on that watershed moment of ETF approval. The rest, as they say, is history. But how much further can this bull run really go from here? That's what we're diving into next as we revisit Fred's other prescient predictions from 2022. Indexing has worked for the United States over the last 20 years, right? There's no doubt you bought the S&P in 2000, you're up seven times, okay? Great. And not only you're up seven times, but you're up on a very, very kind of steady trajectory, up seven. You have this little blip, blip down, which was very painful in the great financial crisis, right? But it was very quick, right? 09, we kind of recovered quickly and then then it was just straight up, right? So if you contrast that with the graph of Bitcoin, it's a lot cleaner, right? So most kind of TradFi investors are like, why do I need Bitcoin, right? I mean, my portfolio just goes up like this, straight line. That's their experience, especially over the last 10 years, right? That's absolutely their experience. Straight line up, right? So on the other hand, if you look at a, a Japanese investor, for example, it was a straight line up from 1970 to 1990. Then it was a straight line down from 1990 to about 2005. And now it's sort of climbing back, but it's just a 
horrible experience, right? Yeah. So indexing in general doesn't work. It's indexing to the right asset in the right time works. And I think basically, you know, the U.S. stock market, that was the right asset in the right time for the last two decades. Now, personally, this is one area where I think Fred makes an extremely compelling case. We've all seen how the stock market has dominated the last decade, but past performance doesn't guarantee future results, as they say. And when you think about how disruptive technology like the internet upended traditional investments, it's not hard to imagine Bitcoin doing the same thing this cycle. I mean, the potential upside is just so much greater with crypto in general. I definitely think that that's kind of where I think most of the money is going to be parked. It's going to be parked in an asset allocation thing, which is like super, super bullish, right? Because this is, DGENs are always talking about their diamond hands, but, you know, with the diamond hands, there comes the total, you know, 100x perpetual traders, right? So, and even the diamond hands, you know, a lot of them completely panic because of because they're just they have too much ownership right like that's the problem with bitcoiners the problem with bitcoiners they you talk to the average bitcoiners they own no other asset other than bitcoin right so they're like yeah i'm all in well i'd say if you're completely all in you're vulnerable right because what's going to happen is bitcoin's going to go down 50 percent, and all of a sudden you need to pay the rent you know you just had a car accident you need to buy a new car something right you're going to be a forced seller right now if you own three or five percent of your portfolios in bitcoin and it goes down 50 percent, what do you care you know it's like great you're, you're down half a percent you know on, on your overall portfolio it won't matter so i think the average portfolio the average sort of high net worth portfolio is, is pretty diversified you know yeah they've got a lot of exposure to the U.S. stock market. But if they get involved in Bitcoin, this is not going to sink or swim, kill, kill them. Now, this one really caught my attention because it shows how bullish yet realistic Fred's outlook truly is. He isn't calling for people to go all in on BTC by any means. But his argument that a mere 1% of the average portfolio put into Bitcoin could result in it becoming a mainstream adopted asset is quite compelling. I mean, we're talking trillions of dollars if that played out. One of the things that really kills me about people your age is a lot of them are like, well, Fred, you know, you had such a, you boomers had such a good time with houses, right? You bought your house, you bought your your dad or, you know, the average person. You guys bought these houses in the 70s for like 10 grand or 20 grand, you know, like they're so expensive now. But yet you've got this other asset that's going to do far better than housing, Bitcoin. Way better. And you're not applying that same logic with Bitcoin. And you can buy a dollar of it. You don't have to have a down payment for Bitcoin. Yeah. You know, and you don't have to go house shopping find the perfect house. You just buy Bitcoin. It's fungible, right? So you're sitting in front of the best opportunity. I didn't have Bitcoin, okay, when I was 30 years old. Didn't exist, right? So you've got this perfect instrument, this perfect investment, and yet you guys are bitching about house prices. Okay, I found Fred's advice for young holders to really resonate as well. I'd add here that rather than worrying about short-term price action, focusing on accumulating SATs each month and ignoring the hype is the best strategic move here. And for those of us who got in relatively early, Bitcoin really could end up being the greatest individual investment we ever make by far. We've already come so far in just over a decade, but when you think about how much further Bitcoin and crypto innovation can go, it's hard not to share in Fred's excitement about what's to come long term. Whether it's global instability, driving more people into a censorship-resistant asset, or mainstream platforms making crypto easier to use than ever, all the pieces do seem to be falling into place for continued adoption growth in the years ahead. So in summary, guys, while not all his predictions may pan out, Fred's overall thesis that Bitcoin is still in its early stages and could emerge as a leading macro asset does seem very plausible given where we're headed. All right, friends, there you have it. I'd love to hear your own thoughts on Fred's outlook. Do you think he'll continue being proven right? Could Bitcoin really hit six figures and beyond like he suggested? Drop a comment below and let's talk crypto. And before you head out, be sure to smash that like button to show us your support. Also, subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss out when we do new deep dives and analyses. Finally, if you're looking for even more ways to gain insight and stay connected with our amazing community, swing by the CoinGraphy Telegram group. It's linked in the description.
In there, we share the latest news, trade signals, and project updates and have tons of fun too. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Until next time, happy hodling and may the trends be ever in your favor.